with expectation. Jehovah, in your mercy, break forth in your glory. In your power, manifest yourself. Thank you because we are God. Lord, we say we are grateful. We receive the ministry of your daughter with thanksgiving. Father, liberty to operate tonight. Release unto her. Thank you because you are so good. We honor you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's do it better. Let's do it better. Let's do it better. Hallelujah. Amen. On Saturday, while I was here, I was greatly blessed. As the servant, the vessel that God is going to use to bless us tonight was ministry. Many testimony. And God is using her across the nations. She brought her book. It's on the stand over there. Hallelujah. Yeah. But more importantly, I want us to look at the Jesus that she's carrying to the nations tonight. Mm -hmm. We want to appreciate the gifts in your life, ma'am. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Why don't we just appreciate Jesus even more tonight? Hallelujah. Oh, because he is here. Amen. Uh, you know he's here. Yes. Uh, as many as as many as are gathered in his name, you know he's here in the midst of us where two or three are gathered, he's here. And so why don't we just honor him, honor the person of Jesus, Amen. honor his presence, and everything that he is, and everything that he does, everything that he's been doing. Yes, Lord. Lord Jesus, tonight we worship you. Tonight we worship you, Lord. We bless you. We exalt you. We adore you. We magnify your name, Jesus. We bless you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. We adore you, the living word of God. Lord, we give you praise. We worship you, Lord. The Lamb who was slain before the foundation of the age. We just give you praise. We love you, Jesus. Lion of the tribe of Judah. We give you praise. The true and the faithful one, the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, and the one who was, and the one who is, and the one who is to come. We bless you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Jesus. 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 There is no greater thing that we can do but to pour out our love to Him. There is no greater worship that we can give and to just open up our heart and just give more and more of ourselves to Him. He is so worthy. The fear is out of 10,000 to our soul. The fear is out of 10,000 to our soul. Is it, isn't it beautiful? He is so beautiful. He is so beautiful in His meekness. He is so beautiful in His gentleness. He is so beautiful in his loneliness. He's so beautiful in every single way, oh Lord Jesus. Will you open up our eyes tonight that we will see you without a veil? Will you open up our eyes that we will see you without a veil? That every veil that man has put on us, that we put on ourselves, oh God. That circumstances has put on us, oh Lord I ask. That by the fire of your love for us tonight, that you will melt it away from us. That we will see you as you are. That we will see you as you are. Without a veil. Without
God of God, will you transition everyone in this room right now? Will you transition every single one of us right now, oh God? That we will see you just as you are. And from that place of seeing you, that we will walk with you as you take us, oh Lord, from one level of glory to another level. We honor you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Wow, what, um, what, what a story to be here tonight. You know, how, how many of you found it easy what, to get here tonight? Or did you have to drive in traffic? Did you find it easy? How many of you found it difficult? Yes. You found it difficult? Yeah. You know, I believe that God has, yeah, I believe that God has something. You know? <laughs> hey. Hey. Whoa! Hey. Hey. Welcome, Robin. So just saying about how difficult the traffic is. Awesome. Okay. Welcome, Robin. <laughs> what was she saying? I was just saying, how many, of, how many of you found it difficult to get here tonight and you came in? <laughs> well, welcome. You know, you, know, but, you know, but let me tell you something. <laughs> God has something in store and that nothing that the enemy, you know, cannot stop whatever that God has in store for you. God has something for you. You know, I just open up your heart and to receive of the fullness everything that Jesus has tonight. Just open up and just let him pour out to every one of you tonight. And it's my prayer tonight that really you know, Jesus would just, you know, speak through me and pour himself that everything I say, it will be of him. He is so worthy. He's so worthy. So um, welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you for just pushing through all the oppositions and just coming in no matter what happens, just pushing through all the oppositions and just coming tonight. You know, tonight reminded me of... Um, um, a meeting I had in in Nigeria not too not too long ago, and it was a really, you know, it was a really terrible day. Uh, like there was fuel scarcity, and there was a lot of traffic, and even the pastor who came to pick me up, we spent like ages on the road before we got to the meeting. It was spent ages and ages, and when we finally got to the meeting. But one thing that really, you know, impressed me, only a few people were able to come for the meeting because really when there's fuel scarcity and there is traffic, on, it was almost impossible. But the people who were in the meeting, they were like, you know, have you seen the Nigerian power, Nigerian spirit? <laughs> I mean, praise and worship. They were just praising God with all their heart. They were not even complaining. They were just worshiping and they were praising God. And I remember that night, there was a guy there who got healed. God gave me a word of knowledge. And he was the one that he's had a pain and sickness in his body for a long time. And he was healed that night. And when he gave his testimony, you know what he said? He said it was a good thing, you know, because it was so difficult. It was so difficult for him to get there. But it was a good thing that he didn't tell his friend that he was coming. Because his friend would have told him, oh, you're so silly. Why are you, you know, going through all that hassles just to come? He said, wow, thank God that he didn't tell his friend. Because if he told him, he probably would have listened to him. And he would have missed his breakthrough. So why did I share that? You know, it's just so worth it. You, you didn't come to listen to a human being. I mean, and I know I'm a human being. But you came to listen to the Christ that is in me. Amen. And it is worth it with everything that is inside of us, especially in these last days. Just to count the cost. Count the cost and just press in with everything that is in us. Right. Press in with everything. Because we have not resisted sin to the point of shedding our blood like Jesus did. You talk of resistance, resistance, but we've not resisted up to the point that the Son of God, Jesus, he had to press in, you know, in the garden of Gethsemane where the droplets of sweat or whatever it was, the blood, he resisted sin, he resisted it because even though he could have told his father, he had a lot of reasons he could have given not to go to the cross, but he 
he resisted with every fiber of his being. But we've not resisted up to that point. So I want to encourage you tonight. No matter how dark that it looks that the world might be getting, resistance getting um, stronger and stronger, challenges getting stronger, this is not the time what to slumber. This is not the time what to give up. This is not the time to be faint-hearted. This is not the time. This is the time to be awakened with all that is inside of us, to follow the Lamb of God wherever He goes. This is the time to hold on to Him and say, Jesus, Jesus, let your will be done. You know, manifest yourself through my life like never before. It's an encouragement. And I see every face that I see here tonight. You know, I see an army of the living God. Amen. You know, that's one of the things that God had called me to do. Mm, my name is, for those of you who have seen me for the first time, my name is Ella. And um, I'm, I found, uh, I'm the founder of a ministry called uh, Harvest of the Nations. And I just travel around the world and preach a message of revival and awakening to a lot of churches and to a lot of people, and I see this revival God bringing in to a lot of places, Muslims, radical Muslims, so many different kind of people who had ground coming to know the Lord, the harvest of souls, because it's a time of great harvest. Amen. You know, it's a time of great harvest, and God just releasing his word with signs and wonders. And you know, on Saturday when I was here, I was saying, why not here, why not now? Why not this place? Why not here? Why not now? You know, what happened? We went, we went to the street. I'm not sure if you shared the testimony on the Saturday night. But we went out to the street and we thank God for the great um, uh, team of people that we went out. Lloyd and the brother Frank, uh, we went up. And just from a few people that I spoke to, I mean, we saw so, we had testimonies of so many people who came to the, the Lord, Hindus, Muslims. You know, you know, about 14 people from the few people that I spoke to. And, and I just thought to myself that when you say, why not here, why not now? It is really true that revival can just break out like that spontaneously. Because that's what happened in Acts chapter 2. So all these people were just doing was they gathered together in one accord, in unity, in expectation for the outpouring of the Spirit of God. And as they waited, you know, the Bible says suddenly, sudden, you know, it was suddenly. Yeah. Suddenly there was a sound like of a, of a mighty rushing wind. Yeah. Yeah. And the whole place, you know, the whole place was filled up. And suddenly there were tongues of fire that settled upon every single one of them. And what do we have to do to be ready for this revival? It can spontaneously just break open. I've been part of and I've seen many spontaneous moves of God that have taken place in unexpected places, taking a power walk, going shopping, <laughs> whatever. I mean, God just pouring out His Spirit. But what does it take to be ready? You know, like someone was saying, to be positioned. Now, I really believe in Psalm 110. Mm. See, my people will be willing in the day of His power. My people will be willing. There is such a willingness. All God is asking for is a heart of willingness. And I believe that the day of his power could be every day. So yes. We always think it's going to be in the future. We always pray for revival that will come in 10 years time. That will come in 20 years time. But if we have a willing spirit, we have a willing spirit. We can't be positioned that, you know, revival can just be following us and be manifesting wherever we go. So everywhere I go, I see an army of the living God. Yeah. And I believe that God has, has called me to stir up, you know, the body of Christ wherever I go yeah. to awaken. No matter who you are, you know, no matter what you do, you don't have to be a, a pastor or a prophet or any of those titles. But you just believe in Jesus because you have the greatest treasure that is in you, Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. You know, it doesn't matter how old or how young you are. I'm excited when I go into meetings where, where they don't keep the kids out. <laughs> and the kids are in the room and lots of kids. And I see the spirit being poured out and the kids are on the floor crying out to God. They don't even want to get up. 
Because the move of God, I believe the outpouring of the Spirit, the Bible talked about in the book of Jonah. It said, in the last day I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. That outpouring upon all flesh is for all flesh. Amen. It's for everybody, Amen. both young, Amen. both old, women, men, whoever it is yeah, yeah. that is willing in the day of the power of God. Yeah. You were made, you were prepared for such a time as this. Yeah. Get ready, get ready, yeah. get ready, get ready. Get ready, yeah. get, ready get ready. Get ready. I see an army of the living God. I see an army here tonight. I see an army of the living God. The God putting new weapons in your hands. God putting new weapons of hope, love, righteousness, the breastplate of love, and righteousness on your chest. God giving you new weapons. God giving you new punished weapons. Ha! God raising a warrior, men and women, even in the last days, who will know how to release the glory of God and not to falter and not to fall behind in the name of Jesus. And I call for this army tonight. I call you forth. I call you forth in the name of Jesus. I prophesy into the core of your destiny. I call you out from a place of healing. Yeah. I call out those who have felt that they have been yeah. in caves and in dungeons. I call you out. I call you out by the Spirit of the living God. In the name of Jesus, I call you out to rise up, to awaken. I call you in the name of Jesus to fulfill every place where God has called you.
what I'm going to share um, about the glory of God tonight. Oh, thank you. It's like fresh water. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so when I was um, thinking and just asking God um, what I'm going to share about the glory of God to, to, tonight, and, and I believe that what, what God has released into my heart to, to share to tonight is Jesus himself, Jesus himself being the glory of the Father, the express image of God. And I know that when we talk about the glory of God, I mean... There are so many ways that God's glory manifests. Amen. Amen. There are so many ways that God's glory manifests, like in um, you see, Exodus, 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 <laughs> Exodus 33. Exodus 33. So you, we have instances um, where the glory of God will, will come and, you know, it will manifest, and the manifest presence of God will come. Like in Exodus 33, verse 8, and Moses actually went into the tabernacle to, to meet with God, and in verse 9 it says, As it came to pass, as Moses entered into the tabernacle, the cloudy pillar descended. You know, like the cloud will come. <laughs> the cloud will come. But you know what? It's like in the Old Testament, the, the Israelites didn't even know how to handle when the glory of God comes. They would be so afraid. You know, like in, in Hebrews chapter 12, it says, we've not come to a mountain that can be touched. Like in the Old Testament, when they actually see the glory, they will be scared when the mountain is just, you know, the, the flame or whatever, the smoke. And they say, oh no, Moses. You go and talk to God. We don't want to talk to this God. Yeah. You know, so the glory of God <coughs> can come in that kind of manifest presence like a cloud or in the temple when Solomon was <coughs> dedicating the, the temple, you know, and the presence of God came and it was so much that they could not even stand. <coughs> and so it can come in even in signs and wonders. You know, have you, you've been in meetings before where Maybe when um, the presence of God is so strong that you will see sometimes, uh, what do you call it? I was going to say gold dust, silver dust, or what, whatever. Have you yeah. experienced that before? And um, I remember that a, a couple of weeks ago, I was speaking at this church in, um, I was speaking at the church in Kilburn. And um, I wasn't even talking about the glory. I was just preaching about, um, from Isaiah 58, living a sanctified life and walking in justice and all that. And then at the end of the meeting, like practically like almost all the chairs were covered. I've seen gold dust be be before many, many times, but I've never seen so many colors. They looked at the back of the chairs and they said, wow, what is this green, blue, different colors all over, you know, you know all over the chairs. And as we're talking about it, I looked at the pastor's, the, the pastor's uh, jacket. It had green, whatever, just co covering his uh, coat. <laughs> I didn't even have to be asking them. I said, did you put anything on your chairs? They said, no. And then one woman said, come on, look at my daughter. This has never happened to her before. Look at her hand. Look at all the colored gold, whatever dust that is coming from my hand. So I had to explain because I always encourage people, you know what, don't run after signs and wonders, run after Jesus. And whatever signs and wonders will come, he will follow you. So I had to explain to them, look, heaven is full of glory. It's full of all these things. So sometimes when the glory of God is so present, his presence, you know, can manifest in that kind of way. You know? And what what even happens, the the what you the how 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 would I say it is the effect of it that you even watch mm. because during that meeting they were like wow the presence that's such a sweet sweet beautiful presence of God here so they could tell that it was from God amen, amen. but when we look at that as wonderful as beautiful as that can be but for me what I see is that the most beautiful 
expression of the glory of God is Jesus himself. Yes. You see? Because when we understand what the fullness, who Jesus is, amen, if we understand who he is, because sometimes we could be in a meeting when the cloud will come or the presence will come, and people could still go out and still be the same. But when we understand the Jesus that is in us, that we are carrying, who exactly is Jesus, the hope of glory? Who is Jesus, the hope of glory? then I believe that that will really transition us into a place where we really begin to walk as mature sons and daughters of God. Where we know who Jesus is, the hope of glory. So who is this Jesus, the hope of glory? Turn your Bible to um, Hebrews. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 1. So you, you, we, we've had that scripture many times that Christ in us, the hope of glory. But what does it mean to carry Christ in us and to manifest Christ in us, who is the hope of glory? What I want to do tonight is to share in very practical terms so that we can actually walk with that re revelation in our day-to-day -day life. So re revelations, uh, sorry, Hebrews, Hebrews 1. 1 verse, verse 3. It says, Who being, uh, if you start from verse 1, it says, God, who has sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in this last day spoken to us by his Son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the world, who being the brightness of his glory. And the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. Mm -hmm. So you can see Jesus yeah. is the brightness of the glory of God. And the express image of God himself. Hallelujah. Can you imagine when you say you're carrying Jesus? It means that you are carrying the express image of God. Mm -hmm. Wow, you are carrying the very brightness of the glory of God inside of you. Amen. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. So if you look yeah. at Colossians, Colossians chapter, chapter 1, verse 15. This same Jesus is like a cross-reference. He says that he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. The firstborn of every creature. Wow. So that means that as he is, so are we, because he's the firstborn of every creature. And he is the image of the invisible, the word invisible. In the Bible it says nobody has ever seen God. Nobody has ever seen God. And Jesus spoke to the Israelites, he said to them, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So when you think of Christ in you, the hope of glory, you know that as you carry Christ, you're carrying God. God, can you imagine God, the creator of heaven and earth? In Isaiah chapter 66, it says that the earth is your throne. The earth and the, uh, sorry, heaven is your throne and the earth is your footstool. That's how great God is. That the whole heaven, massive, massive heaven is his throne. And on the earth, it's just a footstool for him. Amen. How magnificent, how full of splendor is that? But even with all of that, it says, where is the place of your rest? <laughs> where is the place of your rest? Where is the place of the rest of God? Inside of you and I. That's where his glory chooses to dwell. Inside of a broken and a contrite spirit, he will not despise. Hallelujah. So if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. So number one, when we carry Jesus inside of us, we are carrying God, the express image of God. And you just know that nothing, 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 nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. And in verse 16, Colossians chapter 1, it says that for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that, and that are in earth visible and invisible, 
whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. What does that tell you about Jesus? It's talking about Jesus in, in his creative nature, in his creative personality, in his creative ability. He creates. You know, in the beginning, in Genesis chapter 1, there is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And without Him was not anything that was... He was the one that made everything. So when God said, let there be light, and there was light, Jesus was there. So can you see what it means that Jesus, who creates, is living inside of you and I? So it means that the very ability was to create and to call things forth, things that are not as though they are, it lies in the midst of you and I. Amen. Amen. Doesn't that excite you? Oh, yeah. you know, let, me, let me explain what, how that could look like. We're all excited or we've heard about creative miracles, right? Yes. That when creative miracles take place and you... Uh, and then you see, you know, missing legs and arms. And I wish and I pray that there would be more of those, you know. Amen. Don't you wish? Amen. Don't you pray? Don't you pray? <laughs> Don't you pray that, ooh, eyes appear, legs appear. Yes. Why? Why? Why can't it not happen? Why yes. Not? Why, why not, not you? Now? Why not I? Why not now? Yes. Why not now? now Jesus. Yes. Carries within oh, himself the very ability to create because he is the word that brought forth the existence of everything that is on this earth and he lives inside of us. Mm. And we are created in the image of God. And the Bible says that God calls things that are not as though they are. He calls from the end, even from the beginning. You see? I wish I was walking and creating miracles every day, but me I believe too. that God is taking me there. Amen. But I've experienced a few of those instances where I've seen creative miracle. And I'll just give you um, uh, one testimony of that. And I told you, like on Saturday, the reason I love giving testimonies when I minister is just so that we will be so clear in our heart that all the things that happened 2,000 years ago and all those times, it's not, it's happening right now. It's relevant. And then it also activates your faith that when you hear this testimony, you can jump in and say, yes, that's me. That's me. I can walk. I'm also going to walk in that. So I want all of you from today to just grow in your faith and everywhere you go, begin to release miracles. Well, flow in that river. Ezekiel chapter 47 talks about the river of God. It's not meant to stay in the ankle. The deeper you go, the deeper you go in the depths of God, the higher the river rises. The deeper you go in the miracles, the river, the higher it goes from your knee to the waist. God is calling you to step in. You were made for that. You were made for that. The one who creates is inside of you. So this testimony I want to share is quite actually an, an old testimony. It was like several years ago. It was actually like 2009. <laughs> but I love it. So that's why I still share like so, sometimes now. I was um, speaking at a conference in um, Turkey in Devon. I don't know if anybody, you know, Patricia King was ministering there and I was one of the speakers. I was just, I just mentioned that because I was wondering if anybody there attended that conference in 2009. But it was a while back. So, so this is what happened. I stood in front of the meeting and, and I had this word of knowledge. And usually when I have word of knowledge for people, I feel it in my body. That area of my body starts to burn mm -hmm. like heat. Mm -hmm. So I felt the heat in my feet and I said, oh, there are people here or oh, there's somebody here. Uh, God wants to heal them in their feet. Mm -hmm. And several people lined up. And then I started to lay hand and pray for them. And one particular woman just fell on the on she fell on the floor under the anointing. 
And I knelt down, I put my hand on her feet, and I started to pray in Jesus' name, <laughs> I release healing. <laughs> and then she removed her shoes, and she told me, I have to explain something to you, she said. <laughs> and she told me that the reason why her feet is so painful was because she was born uh, with an abnormal feet. Like she didn't have any heels, or she was completely flat, flat-footed. <laughs> No, no heels, no, no arches, yeah, no nothing. Arches. So because of that, she found it extremely difficult to walk without a lot of pain, <laughs> difficulty, and very painful. So when she said, I thought to myself, oh, she needs a creative miracle, mm -hmm. you know. And you just stepping in your faith can you can be you just remembering somebody else's testimony. Mm -hmm. So I remember somebody else's testimony, books I read about people who went into heaven and they went into this creative room in heaven where they are missing arms and legs. But well, I believe it. I'm going to do it. So I was like, ah, in the name of Jesus, I, by faith, I enter into that room of creative miracles in heaven. You know, and I just call for this missing uh, 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 heels appear now <laughs> in Jesus' name. So, <laughs> but the funny thing was, as I was declaring this, I wasn't even looking at her feet. I was just praying. And I, I didn't, I was praying, but I didn't really explain what happened there and there. It's, it's too funny. <laughs> but she was like, she's, she said, look, look, look at my feet. Look at my feet. And I looked. She said, they are growing. And I looked and my eyes were bigger than, even bigger than, bigger than it is. Was possible, and I saw those two arches growing out Come before on. our eyes, <laughs> and then and they, they grew out, she became normal. Wow. And she got up to test it, no pain after so Hallelujah. many days. completely normal. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and then I saw her like how her, I saw her like uh, um, a month. Later, in another conference I was attending, I didn't remember her, but she came to me. She said, I just wanted to encourage you. I was the lady you prayed for, and I want to tell you I'm still healed. No oh, pain. Lord. Yeah. 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 But why did that happen? If only every single day we would go deeper. The way we go deeper in this is to find more of that miracles. If God used you in a miracle in one area, yeah. don't stop there. Look for more and more people like that. Yeah. Hallelujah. Look for more and more people yeah. like that. Yeah. Amen. Recently, I, I published, there was a word um, with a testimony that I sent that was on the Elijah list. And I just wanted to share that testimony as well because, again, that was in another area where you just need to press in with what Jesus has revealed to you. Yep. Because if Jesus releases creative miracle, he's also he's a healer. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you imagine Jesus the healer? Yes. Why is it that every place where he was walking, mm -hmm. every place he was walking in Israel, in Jerusalem, in Galilee, yep. the Bible says that everybody who was sick, they were healed. Amen. Everybody who came to him. Yeah. Can you imagine the healer yeah. living inside of you? Yeah. Yeah. Can you imagine the healer yeah. living inside of yeah. you? Yeah. 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 He is a healer like no other. He is a healer like no Amen. other. And he lives in you. Amen. So when I was sharing about walking and allowing the river of God to just increase in your life. You know, three years ago, uh, is that 2013? I think yes. so. <laughs> 2013 in October, I just returned from um, a trip to Israel. My mom was on my first trip. And when I came back, I heard a lot of bad news. <laughs> like a pastor from Norway was dead. He had cancer. <clears throat> and I was praying for him and others were praying for him. And there were so many, several people that had been hearing who were dying of cancer. And I said, that day I just laid on my bed. And I was like, Jesus, but why? Why is this happening? And I kind of made an emotional cry from my heart. And I said, Jesus, why don't you give your church the authority and power to destroy cancer? Of course, I knew you. Amen. Take care so forward. This anybody with uncurable cancer. And he said that he's been diagnosed forward. with leukemia. He's from Bulgaria. I prayed for him. Be healed. 
Roughly about two weeks later, his friend writes me on Facebook. He said, you know that, my friend? Really, when you prayed for him, he didn't really believe in you, you know? He said, that, that woman, I'm not sure. <laughs> no problem. Jesus. He, he didn't believe. But he said, after he went to the doctor, they gave him the all negative clear. Leukemia was out of his blood. It's time to go deeper. Yeah. So I went to Nigeria. This was in Nigeria, in Lagos, at a redeemed church in Lagos. At the end of the meeting, I said the same thing. Anybody with incurable sickness, come forward. Jesus is going to heal you. <laughs> and they came forward. I prayed afterwards. And then after that prayer, at the front of the block, and the commotion was centered around an old woman. There was an old woman who was very, how would I say, she was really antagonistic to people. And she would approach somebody and she would scream at them, not in a nice way, and say, give me some cigarette. And the person said, no, I don't have cigarette for you. And she said, I will curse you, I will put a curse on you. It turned out she was an old gypsy woman who really believed she had curses that would work. So, so, so when anybody tells her, I don't have a cigarette, she would say, I'm going to curse you. I put a curse on you. But what happened, people were pulling away from, from her. Like You could see from their faces, they didn't like her. She was so rude. They were horrified. They didn't want anything to do with her. But I found out that as I walked towards her, Christ in me, from the dream I had, stepping out with his hand and faith, he was more repulsed by her. He wanted to touch her, wanted to embrace her and reconcile her to him, even though she was enemy in her mind towards him and towards people. But Jesus was drawing me to go to her, to love her, because he's the fullness of love. He's love himself. Amen. And how does he manifest? One of the ways that we can minister most effectively, simply walk in compassion. Yeah. So I went to her. And I noticed that she was carrying these bags. And I said to her, I said, can I help you with the bags that you're carrying? She said, yes. I can't even remember if she said thank you. But I carried the, 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 the bags. And she asked me the same question. And she said, give me some cigarettes. <laughs> I said, I don't have cigarettes. I don't even think it's good for you. you know? <laughs> and she was so angry with me. So we entered the escalator. I live on the 14th floor. I asked her, where are you living? So she said, the fourth floor. So we came out of the lift, and I stood in front of her house with her bags. I wasn't going to enter into her home. I just stood outside her home, and I just shared very quickly with her. I said, you know, I'm a Christian, and Jesus saved me from when I was a child. I was very depressed. I was traumatized. I was hearing voices in my head. I was suicidal. I was self-harming my body. I wanted to kill myself, but when I was 15 years old, I received Jesus as my savior. I just shared very quickly to her. And at the same day, Jesus healed me from depression. So I was sharing with, with her. And then she just grabbed my hand, her little hand. She just grabbed my hand like that. And she said, come into my house now. <laughs> so I said, no. Because I was thinking, you know, you won't want to go into someone's house who acts like that. I'm like, no, I just want to stand outside and just talk to you. And she said, she grabbed my hand. She said, come into my house now. Because if you don't come in, I will put a curse on you. <laughs> she said, I will put a curse on you and I will undo every good thing that Jesus ever did. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't say I, I did, to be honest, I didn't like what she said, but I still, I, I wasn't angry, but I said to her, but that's not a very nice thing to say. I said, <laughs> so in essence, she's saying, all the depression Jesus healed me of, if she curses me, they'll all come back. <laughs> so I said... <laughs> But I didn't respond by saying, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I rebuke I didn't do that. I just said, but what's the problem? Do you need to have been caught in myself? I've ended up in hospital several times because of this. Her husband died years ago and she just went 
like that. I mean, oh, since her husband died. For some but why did she open up like that? She looked like an enemy of God and an enemy of people, but it was coming from a place of brokenness and a place of pain. And it was only love that could uncover it. It was only love that could do that. And then finally she allowed me to share the gospel with her. And she gave her life to Jesus. Hallelujah. Because Jesus truly just wanted to reconcile her. As we walked back into the escalator in the lift, what was she doing? She held my hand. She was crying and laughing and singing at the same time. She held my hand like this and she started to sing. Oh yes, Jesus loves me. Oh yes, Jesus loves me. Oh yes, Jesus loves me, for the Bible tells me so. And tears were just streaming from her eyes as she was. I've seen her a number of times after that. She looks like a different person, not aggressive anymore. But what happened? She had an encounter with love. Sometimes we think that it has to be signs and wonders only that will bring people to Christ. A lot of times it's just a simple act of compassion and love. Understanding that the one who lives inside of you is love and is compassion, and he doesn't want anyone to go. To because I believe that it's in not just the physical gates, in the name of Jesus. but there are in the name of Jesus. there are spiritual yes. gates that, that tries to hold the back the entrance of the glory in the, in the and the revival. In the name of Jesus. So I want us to decree and decree Technics. faith, decree faith. Techniques. Psalm 24 verse 7. Decree faith that revival will come. Um, a few, just a few years ago when I went to Sweden in Gothenburg, before I went to Gothenburg, my friends were telling me it was a really hard place for souls to come to Christ. When I heard that, I didn't want to go with the confession of a man. And God led me to this scripture. And I remember what I did. I decreed over the gates of Gothenburg in the spirit that the gates will open and I decree lift up your head for your gates and be lifted up here in the last two that the people of glory may come in and walk in the name of Jesus.